Hey there, Internet. It's all good Sam here. And this is a video I've recorded of um, me working digitally. I've been practicing with my uh, X-Pen 15.6, which is uh, it's like a Wacom Cintiq, but uh, lower, lower cost. They just came up with a Pro that looks really good, but uh, I been using this one for a while and it's actually pretty good. I posted a video recently about the the cons to digital painting and digital drawing that I've been finding. Um, mainly being that it requires uh, more pressure and a heavier hand than I'm used to drawing with paint on paper. But I'm getting the hang of it and I'm getting a little better at having a lighter touch and I keep twiddling the settings to try to get closer to where I want it to be. Um, it's getting better. It's still an issue in that uh, you can't just sort of barely touch the screen, um, but it can come close. So I'm getting adjusted to it. So this is a character design. This is Henry Malenfant uh, from a project called Bliss uh, or uh, the New, uh, New Armageddon Blues, uh, which is a reference to a book I really liked, The Armageddon Blues, which Definitely was partial and uh, partial inspiration for the story here, although it's a fairly bit different, fairly different project. Um, so to say, other than getting comfortable with uh, doing digital work, a little of a replace working on paper, but it's an alternative. I actually don't find it to be faster. Um, a lot of that has to do with simply having more options and um, some of the technical issues. But a lot of the work these days, a lot of commercial work, uh, especially studio work, is built around working on tablets. So I wanted to get comfortable with that medium. And uh, I might just leave this, this is just a character design, it's, uh, so I just may leave it as is. But what I, what I have been doing a fair bit is sketching in rough digitally and then printing out blues to ink them in a traditional fashion. Um, but I could see doing a project potentially digitally. We'll see how comfortable I can get with it. And really when it comes down to it, how fast it is. One of the things you saw me just do there is turn off the buttons on my pen. So one of the real issues I find a lot is that these, uh, both the Cintiq Wacom pens and the pen with the X-Pen here, the buttons down near the front are right where I want to hold them in a more relaxed position. Like if you're holding further forward, you, it ends up being too tight and too uh, precise. And if you're holding further back, you don't get enough tr uh, precision. Uh, so the place where I'd like to hold you holding the pen is right where those buttons are. So I'm constantly accidentally hitting them. In the end, I had to just dis disable them in order to get anywhere. Uh, once I did, it was it was a huge help. It stopped being a, as much of a problem as it had been because up until this point it was interrupting a lot. I rotate my page a lot. I use the rotation feature quite a bit. I was in cl cartooning class this week and a student mentioned that another teacher had said never rotate your paper. But then the context was drawing from life with an easel. And at first I was just like, well, that's just crazy talk. But once they explained that, I understood. Because when you're working on an easel, it doesn't make sense. It's a large, you know, 18 by 22 sheet of paper clipped to a board. You can rotate them, but it's it's maybe less than advantageous. I don't know about never, though. I, I, I don't know if that's the student paraphrasing or what the teacher actually said. But anytime someone tells you never do a thing, I think you should be skeptical. Because there's probably almost always a circumstance in which you should do the thing. Uh, certainly when you're working on paper or digitally here, the reason I'm rotating is to, in order to execute those curves in the most comfortable way I can with my hand. I'm right-handed, so an arc going uh, from the bottom left to the top right in an arcing fashion is a very comfortable natural move for my wrist or my fingers or my elbow, depending on how tight the arc needs to be. Um, but that's much more difficult if I'm trying to do it against the arc so that I have to bring my hand in and tuck it in. You just don't get as smooth a line. So I take advantage of the mechanics of my hand a lot by rotating the page. Um, and then uh, you can see here I'm working in layers and I'm essentially drawing Henry here more or less nude at first just to get work on anatomy and stuff. And this is a character design so I'm trying to think of uh, their build as much as anything else. Um, 
I mean, see, I love liquefy. Like, it was almost right, but it was bugging me. So, fix that. And I kept the layers, so I can always refer back to this. Um, Henry's going to be an interesting character. He's very central to the story. Um, I don't want to talk too much about who they are at this particular time. But we're going to see them through several years of their lives as they age. Um, a question I get a lot in class that I kind of wanted to make the theme of this video. So before I forget, let me mention. I get asked a lot in class, how often should I do this homework? Or how much of this homework do you want? Or I get asked as a professional artist at events, how often should I practice? And I always feel like giving a facetious answer, which is how fast do you want to get good? Um, but it's not entirely facetious at all because it's actually true. How much you practice or how much homework you do I could, I, I do dictate, well, I'd like to see at least three or four examples of this thing that I've asked you to do uh, as a hypothetical. But often I always qualify because in the end I'm saying, really the more you do, the better. And the more time you can give to practicing, the faster you're going to get better. When I decided I was going to become a professional artist, I spent an immense amount of time, three to five hours a day, practicing whenever I could. There were days off. I didn't do it every day. And some days I only sketched for an hour, hour or two. But generally, I, I put a lot of time into practicing. I didn't do one particular thing all day. I, I had a very um, kind of rotating series of different things I would, I would do. I'd work on different pages or draw different things and sketch in my sketchbook. And later on, I, I encountered as a teacher this concept of deliberate focus practice, which pretty closely matches how I tried to practice because it felt the most effective. And it just means sort of picking what you're going to do, focus on it for about 15 to 20 minutes, evaluate the results, try to improve on those for another 15 to 20 minutes, and then put it aside and do something else. Don't beat your head against the wall doing one thing for hours on end. Uh, keep it fresh, keep yourself alert and engaged, but keep practicing. So in the case of like digital drawing here, I try to spend a little bit of time whenever I can doing little bits of work that are less crucial so I can not worry about the outcomes so much and practicing using the tools and getting comfortable with a Cintiq or my X-Pen Cintiq style tablet and uh, getting comfortable with the stylus and trying to get the results that I want from it and the precision that I want from it and without exhausting myself um, and it's been fairly successful I think so far getting there still slower than I would be on paper but I'm also probably doing more refined work as a result, too. Usually a character sketch like this I would just leave rough and keep it loose. But I'll be doing more, and because I want to get good quickly at this, I'll try to do it as often as I can. And that's how often you should practice. You should do it as often as you can, and make it a measure of it, not uh, an obligation or something, or a should, but how quickly do you want to get there? And how much time can you spare to do it? Because the more time you can put in, the faster you'll get there, the uh, quicker you'll get results. So the music we're listening to, by the way, is my cousin, Sarah Sugarman. Uh, she composed these for various projects. And, uh, using a few MP3s of hers that she gave me of various compositions. It's pretty cool. It's not usually available commercially, though. Hope you enjoy. Uh, if you want to get uh, help me get more of this stuff done, check out my Patreon at patreon.com uh, slash sellgood. And there's a student patron category. You can send me homework for feedback. I'll give you notes. Um, but there's also just a way to read my comics. You can go a, a buck or two a month will give you access to my digital library. There's also lots of other stuff. Um, and you'll help me get more comics done. And probably have time to make more of these videos too while I'm at it. So check out Salgood Sam. Salgood Sam. Sorry. Patreon.com slash Salgood or SalgoodSam.com to check out my work, pledge my Patreon, buy my books, and I even have art for sale on SalgoodSam.com in the store. Also, some of my comics are posted there for free if you want to check them out. If you have a look at what I do. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to just leave it at this. Uh, I'll be, I'm going to post some more time lapsed digital work as I get into. Doing more work. I gotta do some landscapes for course material and some more character designs for Bliss here. 
We'll be seeing more of Henry. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're an artist, enjoy the drawing. Always keep it fun, keep it interesting. Uh, hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like and want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.